Some of you already know me, Lindsay Hill, Senior Product Manager at Brigade. I'm a former delegate. Um, I apologize that the laptop, my laptop screen does not, the lid does not have any Tech Field Day stickers on it anymore. It did. It did have the stickers on there, but I had to get the, the screen replaced a couple, of week, like a couple of weeks ago, and it's now completely blank, and I need to go and see Tom afterwards and get some more stickers. But I'm here, and I'm so sorry, Matt Stone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't have time. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll... <laughs> Oh, got it. I'll tell you a story of that one later on, but I'm so sorry, Matt. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you are not sorry. <laughs> He's not here, so no, not really. Hmm. He should have been here. Uh, hopefully, this guy's not going to pop up. <laughs> my demo anyway. <laughs> well played. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, hang on. There we go. Who got the thousand eyes? Uh, pasties, pasties on there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. <laughs> so, oh. I want to run just run through a quick demo here. Um, this is about automatic <laughs> remediation. It's not a networking use case. I'm real sorry. I'm real sorry. But I've been moving country this week, and things are kind of hectic in my life right now. I'm now an American. America. 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 Uh, simple demo here. Uh, we've got a Linux web server. It's being monitored by Sensu. What's, what we're looking at here is Sensu is monitoring the box, looking for things like disk space, CPU usage, that sort of stuff. In BWC or Stackstorm, we've got a workflow which says, if Sensu says disk space is more than a certain amount, Go and trigger a workflow, log onto the box, check to see if it's the logs directory. If it is the logs directory, go and clean up that, go and clean up the logs. Now, I'm the sysadmin part of me says just use log rotate, right? But you know, but this is more about showing what you can do. I want to talk a bit about how we can do this in terms of network stuff as well. And you notice we've also got Slack in here as well. So using um, Slack to how we're inter interfacing with some of this. So this is uh, about, um, hey, where are we? Let's switch this over. So we're using Slack for, for a chat ops interface to this. So where are we? Here we are. So over here, it's on my, here's my Stackstorm setup. I've got a rule on here which says, if I get, if Sensu sends an event, so Sensu is, um, the way we're doing this is when Sensu has a critical event, it makes a webhook call into Staxom. Staxom sees that, sees the parameters, triggers an action, or triggers, in this case, triggers our disk space remediation workflow. Look at that one, that action here. Look at that, this is a multi-stage workflow. Um, like Dimitri mentioned earlier, about workflows and most of them most workflows in multiple stages. Just uh, make this the whole screen so you can see what's going on. First thing, so you notice here we go through a series of steps. At each step there's a success or a failure path. If we succeed, carry on. If we fail, escalate to vector ops. In this case, go through, um, first thing we do is silence the event so we don't keep triggering the same action again and again. Then we're going to check is it the logs directory filling up the space with the logs in there? If it is, yes. SSH, the remote server, use sudo, get privileges, and go and clear out the logs. Check that it's worked, and post a message to Slack. So specifics of the, of the demo, of, the, of what we're doing don't matter that much. What's more interesting is just the overall thing about an event happens from a monitoring system, and we can take some action based upon that. So if we look at this, so here's... Uh, I'm going to trigger this from Slack as well. So this is some of the chat ops integrations that we're talking about. So in this case, if I run help, I get a list of all the commands that my chatbot knows about. Here, what my chat, the first one's the one that I'm going to do. This one here is a 
This is a StackStorm workflow. I'm using StackStorm workflow to trigger another workflow to make something happen to make a StackStorm workflow. So that's how it should be done. On web 301, so what I'm going to do here, I'm running a workflow which is going to create a big log file. So that what will happen is this, as soon as I've entered that, it says, yep, cool, I'm, I'm on to that. Um, this give me, says, yep, I've done that. So at that stage, what that's done is that's just gone out and created a big log file, just so we've got something to trigger. Sensors triggered pretty much straight away to say, bang, that running out of disk space there, better go and do something about it. And we will see once that starts and it's already done it, and it's posted a message back here to say, okay, I ran space log file filled up, your logs directory filled up, go and clear out the files and reset to normal. If we go and look at the, sorry, if we go here, so we've got the link to it, which takes us through to show us all the steps that it went through. And we can see, we can break it down. All of these audit logs, everything's audited. Um, anything you're doing with automation, this stuff matters, right? All of these are audited to local logs, um, complete output of, all, of everything that was run, the parameters that it was with that it was run with the reason, so you can figure out why something ran, you can see exactly what happened when it did run. Lots of content, highly recommend that if you do this, you're throwing these off into Elk or Splunk or something like that. Um, totally like, don't leave all your audit logs on the system that does the actual actions. It's not cool from a security perspective. Um, that's, so you can see Within one action that ran, or one action work, a workflow that ran there, you can see there the multiple in, underlying actions that ran. You can see the results of each of those. We can see here when it ran the. Uh, we hang on, that's what I want. When we ran the, that told us it removed that big file that we created. So that's kind of simple from a, from you know we've got a simple event. We're going to do something on a server. <coughs> But where this gets more interesting is when we start thinking about this in terms of networking context. So the sorts of things I've been talking, that customers have been telling, saying to me that they want to do, is they want to do something like a BGP peer goes down, go and grab some data from the devices, maybe both ends of the device of, of it, of the connection, grab, grab some data, update the trouble ticket. Depending on the data that you get back, go and take a different action. So some, if it's a remote site where you're doing a managed WAN for a retail outlet and the site goes down at 2 a.m., meh, it can wait till the morning. Someone's already kicked the power cord out overnight and it doesn't really matter. Update the trouble ticket though and we'll look at that at 9 o'clock in the morning. If it's something more, more critical and something central to your network, make, do something a bit different. Post, post an, alert, an alert to PagerDuty or VictorOps, whatever you're using, get someone to come out and look at it. That's the sort of stuff where I think it's getting interesting. And I think, I think people, like, people like me that have been doing this a little while get a little bit nervous about some of this. And we're, the thought of taking positive action when an event happens in your monitoring system is sometimes a little bit scary. I think that most people will start out more on the basis of, I'm not going to go and make changes to my network, but I do want to go and grab data. There's an extra information that I want to get at the time that that event occurred. Once I trust that a bit, then maybe I'll start the next stage of actually trying to do take some other actions. Um, sometimes it's possible to take actions and have an <coughs> impact, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you might say, well, I've got a link's gone down on this fiber link here. The old shut, no shut trick sometimes works on that. Let's do it, it's already down, I can't make it any worse. So I'll just do that and see what happens. It's an automated script, it's not me doing anything. If it worked, great, if it didn't work, escalate or go to the next step on your list of things that you want to try. Um, I would love to talk more about some of the packaging and, and things, but I'm probably going to, I'm going to run out. I've got five minutes, so I mean, I don't want to get in trouble with Patrick. I want to talk really quickly about, um, I was just, actually you've sort of, you already know some of this, so I don't, Need to do too much. I don't need to cover too much of this. Um, talked about the open source project versus the commercial part of it. Stackstorm open source, PwC commercial. 
the interesting, one of the key things here, though, something that really matters to me personally, <coughs> is that the open source project remains a useful project. Um, I don't want this to be a, uh, a crippled piece of software where you must purchase the commercial version. It doesn't, it doesn't benefit me. Okay, maybe I get a few more sales, but it doesn't really benefit me. So I need the open source project to remain a viable, useful thing, particularly for people who are using this for non-networking use cases. The reason for that, and, the re and this goes to the, what makes Stackstorm so useful, is all the third-party integrations. So there's 50 plus packs on GitHub right now with third parties with contributed packs for integrations, other applications, other systems, other services. Those are what makes Stackstorm really useful. And if I cripple the community version of Stackstorm and people don't help us with that, there's no way that I can maintain all of those myself. Obviously we need to nurture that and love that and keep that moving along, but I can't possibly do it all myself. So key thing is open source project must remain a useful product that people can download today, use it, do stuff with it. Distribution wise, in terms of uh, actual packaging formats, we distribute it in RPMs and DEBs today. Um, it's available as, in Docker containers as well if you're into that sort of thing. That's getting a big overhaul right now. Uh, one of the team just submitted a PR with 99 changed files. Like uh, we might need to just like take our time reviewing that before we put, put commit on that. Um, that's, um, but so RPMs and DEBs, we support uh, Red Hat and CentOS 6 and 7 and Ubuntu 14.04. I heard the question asked about Ubuntu 16. Uh, that will come real soon now. We've got work, we're working on it. It's working in tests. We're just not quite ready to say it's a fully GA supported thing. Pretty much if you want access to it, it's there. Um, the just the other the pieces on the commercial ones around the support, that design UI, so that's one with the graphical bit, that piece is, that is in the commercial edition. Uh, you do not need to use it, as Dimitri made clear earlier, you do not need to use that to edit your workflows. It's helpful for some things, but it's not, absolutely not a requirement. 